is Paul. Yes. Uh huh. <laughs> um, let me see if this is working or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see here. It's 2.24. Yes. I want to make sure if I can see that. I only have two hours in the study room, and I was sending some emails from some email addresses in 2016. And, um, you know, I thought since no one wants to enforce what's known as due process, <laughs> we should have the cell hearing in the study room. Oh. Um, you know, I, I actually got the idea from the Smithsonian. Yeah. There was a guy named Freud. Yes. He had a bizarre attack on a U.S. president. Oh. <laughs> Does anybody in the psychiatric industry remember Sigmund Freud? He's one of these uh, <laughs> authorities on various psychological issues. And <laughs> I had read a little bit about him. I thought that he was the one that prescribed cocaine for various ailments. <laughs> thinking that the euphoria that you receive from the use of a narcotic <laughs> would solve any of your mental problems. Po -po 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 -po. Why don't you get me all of those that uh, the principles of psychoanalysis <laughs> set out some of the principles of psychoanalysis as they apply to President Wilson. Yes. Mm. Mm. You know, a lot of these presidents, yes, uh, a co-author to write a scandalous biography of Woodrow Wilson. <laughs> uh, throughout the 1930s, as the Nazis rose to power in Germany and took over more aggressive action against the country's Jews, yes, the father of psychoanalysis had insisted on remaining next door in Austria. <laughs> uh, these Nazis that uh, did so much damage, yes, mm -hmm. Uh, fear Freud, despite age and illness, in danger from the Nazis. Yes. Mm. What did we not see? The father of psychoanalysis. Yes. Now, I uh, put a screen print um, that I wasn't given any process, uh, due process in 2011, 2012, 2013, 2015. Yes. And my right to a speedy trial is being violated because my public defender motioned the court on then July 6th of 2018. Yeah. I'm scheduled to go to court in just uh, two days from now. Yeah, I should be in court this time. Yes, in two days. <laughs> now, I'm only concerned about the actual uh, mental ill persons. Yes, uh, that you, well, you really get sued for using mental health evaluations and then you can't use them anymore. <laughs> See, um... I'm not mentally ill and I'm not delusional, uh -huh. but for every individual that thinks that they are a powerful tool to be able to know if somebody's restorable or not, yes, um, I just wanted to make mention that you're not going to have them available. <laughs> now, I had, uh, I had mentioned, yes, mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't in Squim, Washington on December 31st of 2015. Yes. I had been emailing those that have the legal uh, obligation to enforce the laws. Mm -hmm. I was on the bus that morning and I was in this library that afternoon. Yes. I sent you an email in November of 2015 before the arrest. Yes. Where there's no actual signature of the petitioner and just kind of glancing over one of my my old emails, I I wondered how many individuals that are trained in ABA uh, law schools, yes, have ever had a mock trial where there hasn't been a tr uh, petitioner at the hearing. <laughs> Is that how we train them in the ABA accredited schools? <laughs> we have court here. <clears throat> Oh, why don't you get me all the students in the American Bar Association accredited schools? I'd like to know how many of them have been educated to understand that the petitioner does not have to appear for court hearings. They do uh, get to kind of pretend they're attorneys before they mm -hmm, graduate from law school. Yes. Now, um, since you're, you're not going to actually enforce, respectfully submitted the third day of July, 2018, yes, 
I thought that if you motion the court, right, state of Washington as a plaintiff, mm -hmm. uh, myself as a defendant, Paul Budnick, by and through the underside counsel, yes, that that did actually start my right to a speedy trial. Now, maybe you could call my public defender, but to uh, set me aside for 10 weeks when there was no police power involved. This is going to cause an immense amount of harm to the, um, the whole defense of insanity. Yes. Now, I did do what Jack wanted, okay? I did go to his office, right? I filled out this personality assessment inventory, yes. And maybe the psychologist that administered this, mm -hmm. just being involved in a cell hearing on the 30th, you're liable. Ouch! As in, I'm going to sue the individual, yes, that gave me this personality assessment inventory for participating in violating my guaranteed right to a speedy trial. <clears throat> I don't think that you can motion a court and admit uh, the evidence A and B yes, without it being part of the whole speedy trial process. Now, I know the state of Washington, okay, May 14th of 2018, yes, 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 mm -hmm. uh, cause number 2017A0116, the state of Washington versus Paul Chad Budnick, yes. Maybe Phyllis remembers our little talk that we had where she said I was delusional. Yes. And uh, just going through it, Phyllis, uh, May 14th of 2018. Yes. It looks to me like they got your mental health evaluation and my public defender said, no, <laughs> we're going to motion the court and we're going to get one of the counts of the criminal complaints, one of the complaints removed. Yes. And then we're going to set it aside for 10 weeks. And then Phyllis is going to participate in the cell hearing. Now, there's a big question, uh, Jack and Brett. Yes. I'm going to sue this state for knowingly violating the guaranteed speedy trial. Oh. And um, if I do go to court two judicial days from now, this state is going to be reamed for refusing to enforce the guarantees of the speedy trial. Now, this constitution that you seem that, to, to understand that you can just set aside whenever you want, prosecuting attorneys, yes. I want the licenses of every individual that has participated in a cell hearing, yes where the question was the competency of the defendant, mm -hmm, where the defendant uh, did have their right to a speedy trial guaranteed. Yes, because I never, I never waived my right to a speedy trial. Yes. Now, usually I would think these cell hearings are for those that are incompetent, that don't understand the, the guarantees of the Constitution. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I have an example here of an expiration of speedy trial. Yes. It says 90 days after arraignment. Oh, oh, oh. But we had to wait for Phyllis, right, to give to the court her community forensic evaluation. Yes. And then Jack, yes, motioned the court for the dismissal on July 6th or July 3rd. Yes. And Brett responded, po, po, po. and then Jack and Brett decided that we should have our own psychiatrist that we can call during so hearing. Now, let's say you're one of these, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, prosecuting our attorney, Michael Hawes, yes. Arrange proceedings pursuant to United States versus Cell, yes. This is why I'm on the docket, Ouch. It seems that you can require these mental health evaluations, yes without any of the protection of policing power, right? Without a valid protection order, yes. And then what you can do is you can set aside the right to the guarantees of the speedy trial after the public defender had motioned the court, yes. And uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Brett had uh, filed with the Jefferson County District Court on July 6th of 2018, 
his actual response to the defendant's motion to dismiss. <laughs> but on, well, why don't you get me all the licenses of those that are psychiatrists <clears throat> that have been called expert witnesses in every speedy trial, poo poo, and then every jury trial because the defendant waived their right to a speedy trial. Mm -hmm. Now, when the state took it upon themselves to set me aside for ten and a half weeks, yes, actually it's almost a full three months when you consider that the hearings on the thirtieth, yes. They effectively set aside the duration of the speedy trial. Yes. Yes, they do. Mm -hmm. I thought today we'll just have a little cell hearing because I got some of these um, desk reference books and we can go through what delusion is. We can go through what bipolar is, full spectrum. And then we can look at this actual definition of due process. Mm -hmm. See, due process of law is a fundamental constitutional guarantee that all legal proceedings will be fair mm -hmm. and that one will be given notice of the proceedings and an opportunity to be heard yes, before the government acts to take away one's life, liberty, or property. Also, a constitutional guarantee that a law shall not be unreasonable, as in restoration laws. Yes. Mental health evaluation laws. Yes. The calling of expert witnesses to uh, testify, as in being witnesses on the part of the state mm -hmm, mm -hmm, or the defendant. Yes. It shall not be arbitrary, as in we can set aside... <laughs> Now, give me every fucking license of every individual that's participated in every court case that involved a question of the sanity of the individual. How many of them were experts that were called within the confines of the speedy trial? Yes. And how many of them were called because of the speedy trial being waived? <laughs> now, I want to... I want to explain to this state and every state of the United States. <laughs> when I get done today after having our little mock um, uh, cell hearing about my sanity, yes, because we're just going to pretend that we're lawyers in the United States of the fuck. 